Hey guys, welcome to another build guide video. I do these a lot, but you guys seem to enjoy them and I like making them. So today I'm going to tell you guys what all the pros are building, why they're building it, and how to play with it. So let's get into it. If you guys are a little confused about the thumbnail and you're questioning like why are people building crit now when last patch all they were building was death toll and pen, this is the main reason. I don't know if any, if you guys haven't looked at the patch notes, let's go over this real quick. This is an ornate arrow. This builds from Gilded Arrow. It's to the right. It's the crit option. It's pretty much another crit item. And let's just read the buff they gave it. So they gave it 10% attack speed and 5% crit just off the rip. Like just straight away. You don't have to stack anything. And they left. They still have you stack it, but only to 20 stacks instead of 25. And you still get 25% attack speed and 20% crit on top of this when you get fully stacked. So that is the reason people are building crit right now. So if we look at Ornate and we see all the stats it gives, it gives 60 basic attack damage, What if, which if you don't know what basic attack damage is, it's pretty much power that only affects your autos. So 60 power that only affects your autos when you're basic attack hunter, pretty much 60 power. It That's a lot of power guys, that's a lot of power. 150 health, which is just a bonus, it's nice. So you get 10 base attack speed and you get 25% attack speed on top of that. So this is a total of 35 attack speed when it's fully stacked. And you get 5% crit plus another 20% crit. So max max stacks, this is 60 base attack damage, 150 health, 20, 35 attack speed, and 25 crit. And that's all for 200 gold. And if that's not a lot of stats, guys, I don't know what is. This item is very, very amazing now. This is why people are building crit and this is why you should be as well. Forgot to mention guys, the way this item does stack is for every 100 gold in hand, you gain attack speed and crit. So you want to be keeping 2000 gold in hand for max stacks. So guys, here's how the build starts. You start with Gilded Arrow, Spiked Gauntlet, Health, Multi Pots. This is what you're landing with for the first couple levels of the game. You want to get Devos on your first back if possible. If not, just go Ninja Tabby, you know, nothing's crazy here. Ninja Tabby Dev's first two items. Most people go Xy, and here's where it gets spicy, guys. You throw in a Wind Demon. Usually, guys, around this point in the build, you're looking to hit 20 and get your starter up upgraded if possible. If you're behind, you normally can't, but if you're in a good spot that game, normally around the time you have four items, five items-ish, you want to upgrade your starter. And obviously, the starter we're going with is the Guild Ornate Arrow. And then last item, guys, you're going to slam a Deathbringer. I'm very excited about this build, guys. I love this build. I haven't built Deathbringer in years, and it feels so good to build. You do so much damage. And yeah, I would finish Ornate before Deathbringer, just because Ornate has another passive where every source of gold you gain increased by 20%. So when you get this, you'll get this really fast after. It's just really efficient, opposed to the other way around. And yeah, this is the full build, guys. So now I want to talk about the general idea of this build. The general idea is to just farm out early game, with your Gilded Arrow procs, if you don't know how Gilded Arrow works, you last hit a minion, you get gold. You want to consistently do that throughout the early game, the first 10 minutes. You want to get your Devos online, get your Ninja Tabby online, get your Xy online. And at that point, you'll be you'll be set to fight. Like, you can do some damage. But the real damage, guys, in this build comes from the late game. The 4th, the 5th, and 6th item. When you slam Wind Demon, then you get Ornate, then you get Deathbringer. I'd say your DPS is pretty good when you get Wind Demon. Very good when you get Ornate, and then bonkers when you get Deathbringer, because you just start one-shotting everyone. One more thing, guys. I know people are going to ask, what do I sell boots for? Because everyone always asks that. I would say, personally, in my opinion, you should just slam a 3k pot, because you really don't want to lose that many Ornate stacks. So, like, just farming up to sell your boots, you would have to farm about 3,000 gold to get an item like Poison Star. So I would say, if you want more damage, get Elixir Power. If you want to survive more and you're getting dove a little bit, get the elixir defense. The people in SPL today on Saturday sell boots for Poison Star. I think it's still up for debate. I'm not sure which is better. This does get you to 85% crit as opposed to 70. But the elixir defense does give you prots and damage mitigation. So try it out. I don't know. I would say slam at 3k, but Poison Star I'm going to try tomorrow. So we'll see how it goes. The main purpose of this build, guys, is just to do a lot, a lot of damage late game. Be a late game powerhouse. You do a lot of damage to tanks, squishies, junglers, 
Phoenixes, Fire Giant. You can solo fire, no problem. This is why this build is so good, guys. But guys, there's one thing you do have to keep in mind, and it's that the early game of this build is a little weak. And if you go up against the other starter items like Dust Toll and Cal, you will have to play passive and on the back foot. And you shouldn't be really playing aggressive early regardless, but especially against like Bluestone and you know, Dust Toll, Cal, you want to play very passive early. Try not to give up purples, try not to give up your Scorpion. Feel free to give up alphas, I would say, if you're in a bad matchup and you're getting out pressured. Make sure you get purples, make sure you get out Scorpions, make sure you last hit all the minions, and then get to late game, guys. If you guys are curious about the stats of this build when you get late game, you'll be sitting at around 350-ish basic attack damage, which is obviously before you crit. You'll be sitting at 2.18, which scales up to about 2.37 when um, you get Windy Bin proc, and without purple buff. So you're, you're pretty close to attack speed cap, which is perfect. And if you want to see the crit chance, guys, you'll be at 70% crit with this build, which is, this build is an insane late game. If you guys want some numbers here, 50 process will be like hitting a squishy. You'll be critting them for 400, 400, 500. Let's say maybe a hybrid jungler or a hybrid soul laner with about 125 prods. You'll be hitting them for about 350, which is obviously depending on your character and their stuff. And then let's see a tank with 200 prots. You're still critting them guys for almost 300. That's why this build's kind of insane. It does a lot of damage to everyone. If people have spectral, it, it lowers your DPS a little bit guys, but the build's still insane. Don't worry about it. I do want to mention guys two like variants of this build that people are kind of messing with right now. But I don't think they're as optimal as the Wind Demon one. But this one, you just go Rage instead of Wind Demon. Your attack speed will be lower, but this is probably more for gods with steroids. But... Yeah, your attacks will be lower, but you'll crit, your crit chance, if you get your rage stacked, guys, will be 95. You'll be critting every auto. I'll just show you the damage here real quick. It's a little bit more, actually. A little bit more power, a little bit more basic attack damage. Oops, guys, I was wrong. The Wind Demon build actually did more damage because of the percent pen. You can see it did, like, 20 damage more. So, my bad. I meant the uh, Wind Demon did more damage, not the rage. In my opinion, guys, Wind Demon is a little bit better of an option here, just because... It only has 10, it only has 5 power less than rage, but it has pen when you crit, and it has movement speed, which is very important. I think the movement speed is well worth the lacking power and the lacking crit, because you're already getting 70% crit. I would say Wind Demon's better, but people are going rage on steroid gods like Barrowin and on Apollo. And yeah, just try it out for yourself. The difference isn't that big, but you don't get instant attack speed when you build rage. So... There's, there's pros and cons, try and both, see what you like. One more variant, guys, people have been going is Ickfall Xe and then Rage Ornate. This build, the Ickfall kind of gives you a nice power spike for the mid game, but it kind of stunts your pen and crit. But you're actually still sitting with 70% with only two crit items because Rage gives so much. But you're not critting, you're not getting Deathbringer, but also you're getting a lot of power from Ickfall. So I feel like any of these builds are kind of good. It looks like they all do about the same damage, so just see what you like. Personally, I don't like this because I think Ickfall isn't necessary, and I think you're better to get crit items, but, you know. It seems like the crits are about the same with uh, Ickfall as they are with Deathbringer, so it seems pretty similar. Just, just try them all out. Maybe if you're against attack speed comps, you can build this. But those are just a few variations of the build that I wanted to mention. Thank you guys so much for watching if you made it this far in the video. I appreciate it. Drop a sub. I'm very, very close to 1,000. And have fun this with this build, guys. It's very fun. I'm loving it. Good luck in your games. See ya.